Can you remember what it was like before you came into foster care? Yeah, I can. It's, it's patchy, but um, I was in trouble a lot as a kid. Um, and I remember that I was called to the headmaster's office that day. And then obviously I walked in and I saw two completely strange people and my mother. In that meeting they said, you're being whisked away into foster care, which That's was really scary, weird. Confusing. Terrifying. I didn't understand why. And obviously now I completely do. But for a while, I don't think I was able to truly sort of relax. I guess growing up, you never really knew when things would happen and you might suddenly get beaten up or, or whatever. Going from that to a loving family home, I guess is what I would define it as. And actually having that security that, you know, you're not being badly beaten every five minutes. And yeah, I guess like freedom to discover yourself and just be a kid, I guess. The sad bit for me was what you came with. Yeah. You came with a tiny little bag and you literally had a bouncy ball. I've still got a bouncy ball. I, I like to keep it here just yeah. to remind me of what I've, what I've come from. But uh, I kind of refer to myself at times as the bouncy ball kid. <laughs> it took a while as well for you to accept that what you perceived as the norm from when you lived at home yeah. with your birth family, you perceived that as being how every child lived. Oh, sure. But in fact, actually, it took you a while when you came to us to then realise that that wasn't the norm. I think when people ask me about that journey, because you know a few of my friends know about it, but I always find that, you know, I think for you, you probably would say, oh, we only gave you a few tools. But actually it's like, for me, I, I see you as such a fundamental part of, you know, oh. young, winning the Young Entrepreneur of the oh. Year. And as far as foster carers go, I definitely hit the jackpot. I'm not trying to make you cry, oh, but like, you know, I, I can't <laughs> see how I would have done it without you. But then you, you never know, but like, yeah, I do owe everything great to you. But if you didn't want to achieve it, you wouldn't have achieved it, you know? And, th and that's how you have to yeah. look at it. You had that fire and, and you wanted to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Seeing you at the Rockstar Awards, honestly, was the, one of the proudest moments ever. That's really and sweet. Just, <laughs> just think about I it now. have the photo of us on like the red carpet wall thing. Oh, bless. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all right. So, so proud of you. That's really so sweet. So proud of you. I'm terrible when people cry. Sorry. <laughs> So Come cool. in. <laughs> oh. It's fine. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, dear, sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Every child matters. You know, every single child matters on this planet, and, and that's what it's about. So, and I think that's why, one of the reasons why we chose FCA, because we knew that the training package was there, we knew the support was there. As a foster kid, um, you know, I, I very much felt like I belonged with FCA. You know, and then obviously we found a, a permanent place in, in you guys, which was amazing. But yeah, it's, um, it was awesome. So you're amazing. And uh, you know, can't thank you enough for everything. It's like, I can't, when someone does something nice, you say thank you. But it's like, if you look at actually what you've done, and maybe you don't see it, because you're just lovely, kind, and you've, you've helped hundreds of children probably over the years. but. You know, it's, words aren't never enough. Yeah, you're, you are quite literally changing lives as a foster parent.